on the board. So this is the MPM 2D Grade 10 Unit 3 Seminar on Solving Linear Systems. So a linear system we will show, and we just saw on the graph, can have three different types of solutions. We either have no solution, one solution, or an infinite number of solutions. So what does that word solution, when we're talking about linear systems, what does the word solu solution refer to? When the lines intersect. Perfect. So solution refers to our intersection point. And that's what we're going to be discussing for the entire seminar. In order to have an intersection point, we need to have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate for a point. And that's what we're going to be solving for using the tools of substitution and elimination. So this I need you guys to be really, really quiet because we're going to pick up everything you say, okay? Okay, so we're back to the slide that we were just on. So when I'm talking about a linear system having no solution, because solutions are talking about intersection points, when a system has no solution, that means that my lines are going to be parallel lines. And that's what the graph refers to. So when we actually analyze the equations, and you don't have to really understand what it means right now, you're going to ex understand by the end of the seminar, the coefficients are multiplied by the same numbers, but the constants are not. That's, uh, what that refers to is the terms in front of the x and the y are going to, we're going to see are going to be exactly the same, but the constant numbers, the numbers by itself, will not be the same. That refers to when the lines are parallel lines and we have no solution. When we have one solution, that's the ideal case, and in that scenario, the lines intersect. So in this particular graph, I have an intersection point at positive 4, negative 2, and in, when we analyze those equations, you'll figure out that the coefficients are constants and they're not multiplied by the same number. That's the definition of what's happening there. And finally, the third situation, we have infinite number of solutions. Does then anyone know what that means when you have infinite number of solutions? Yep. Yes, basically every single point on those lines are intersection points because we're talking about the same line. So for example, the line 3x plus 2y is equal to 8. If we multiply by that by 2, we get 6x plus 4y is equal to 16. Even though the numbers are different, essentially the lines are exactly the same. So infinite uh, number of solutions means that the lines are absolutely identical, and every single point on that line is an intersection point. Every single point on that line. Infinitely many solutions. So by the end of the seminar, and we can't do this yet because I haven't taught you substitution and elimination, but once you know how to do substi substitution and elimination, basically your test will be solving systems algebraically and graphically. We're going to do this at the very end of the seminar. You have two lines in each scenario, and we have to figure out, are they going to be, give me no solution, one solution, or infinitely many solutions? Okay, and uh, but first, let's learn about substitution and elimination. Okay, so I hope you can see that. These are the steps for the substitution method. I want you to write them down. Because in order to know how to do the substitution, we have to know the steps. So this is the substitution method. For the substitution method, first of all, you always have to isolate 
one variable. That's very important. You're always going to be given two equations, but you're going to isolate only one variable in one of the uh, equations. And it's called the substitution method because after we have to substitute the expression for this variable into the other equation. And after we do that, we're going to solve. I obviously am going to take you through the steps, um, but I want you to write the steps so this way you can memorize the steps. So write this down in your notes, please, all the steps. And this is also very important. Substitute the solved value into one of the equations. So substitution method, you're constantly, constantly substituting, substituting algebraic terms. We have equation number one is 4x minus 7y is equal to 20. And the equation number two is x minus 3y is equal to 10. In any problem, always label the first equation equation number one, the second equation equation number two. And my very first step is going to be to isolate uh, for a variable in either equation. Now, I can pick either equation number one or equation number two. It makes sense to pick the equation where there is a variable by itself. So which equation has a letter by itself, and what is that letter? Yep. Yes, so equation number two has an x by itself. So I'm going to take equation number two. I really want to focus that in on that equation because it makes it very simple to isolate, which means to solve for that x variable. So equation number two has x minus 3y is equal to 10. I'm going to take this x that's by itself, and or actually I'm going to take, um, isolate that x, and that means to move everything else over to the other side. So I get an equation that x is equal to 10 plus 3y. Does that make sense to everyone? I've isolated my equation for x. <coughs> and you'll notice that I like to write out my steps so I understand what I'm doing. No, I do not want to back up my Mac. So step number two is going to be now we're going to substitute substitute x is equal to 10 plus 3y. That was equation number 2. Remember that. That was my new equation 2. So we're going to substitute that into my original equation 1. So my equation 1 was 4x minus 7y is equal to 20. Now I know that I have an expression for x. So instead of x, I'm going to substitute my expression for x. So I have 4 times 10 plus 3y plus 7y is equal to 20. Now I want you to notice something. Before, when I had 4x minus 7y, when I had different variables, different letters, I couldn't solve because they were both different. But now that I've substituted that, it, substituted that expression, the only variable that I have in this equation is y. So I can solve for y. Yep. Oh, yes, sorry, there should be subtract, you're right. So that's a blue, thank you. It's subtract 7y. Okay, so now that everything is in terms of y, I can use the distributive property to multiply this 4 out, and I can go ahead and try to solve for y. So 4 times 10 is 40. 
4 times 3y is positive 12y. I have a negative 7y on the left-hand side and a positive 20 on the right-hand side. If I combine my positive 12 and negative 7y, I get positive 5y. I want to move the positive 40 over to the other side, so I have 20 minus 40. That gives me 5y is equal to negative 20. So what is my value of y going to be? Negative 4, good, because we divide by both sides. So y is equal to negative 4. Am I finished? No. What do I have to do next? It's called the substitution method because I'm going to substitute this into my equation 2 because I know that from equation 2, x, is, uh, x minus 3y is equal to 10. That was equation 2. We changed it around, so x is equal to 10 plus 3y. So now that I know the value of y, I know y is equal to negative 4, so I can uh, simply substitute that in. I'm going to substitute negative 4. x is going to be equal to 10 plus 3 times negative 4. What is 3 times negative 4? Negative 12, good. So 10 minus 12. That means that x is going to be equal to what value? Yes, x is equal to negative 2. Therefore, my solution or my intersection point point my intersection point when x is equal to negative 2 y is going to be equal to negative 4 that is the intersection point of the graph now without actually graphing it you can check your answer. Sometime on the, sometimes on the test, it'll say to check if this is a solution. So to check your answer, we can simply write our two equations. So my equation 1 was 4x minus 7y is equal to positive 20. My equation number 2 was x uh, minus 3y is equal to positive 10. And now wherever you see x in the equation, you're going to plug in negative 2. And wherever you see y in the equation, you're going to plug in negative 4. So I have 4 times negative 2 minus 7 times negative 4 is equal to 20. What is 4 times negative 2? Negative 8. And what is negative 7 times negative 4? Negative 28 or positive? Positive 28. So I'm just going to stick with my left-hand side. Is negative 8 plus 28 equal to 20? Yes. So 20 is equal to 20. So I know my left-hand side is equal to right-hand side. This satisfies the equation. So that is okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the, for equation number 2. So I have negative 2 minus 3 times negative 4 is equal to positive 10. That means that negative 2, positive 12 is equal to 10. What is negative 2, positive 12 going to give me? Positive 10. Positive 10 is equal to 10. You need to write hand, uh, um, on your test, make sure that you write left-hand side is equal to right-hand side. And this is how you prove that your solution is correct. 
you get marks for this process on the test, so make sure that you know how to check your answers. Does this make sense to everyone? Yes. Okay. I'm going to get you to copy down a word problem, and we're going to use substitution for the word problem. So this is example number two. Boys, I can pick up everything you're saying, please. The school sold 108 tickets for the spring concert. Student tickets cost $2 each, and adult tickets cost $5 each. The concert proceeds were $351. How many students attended? So first of all, we're going to let S represent students. Students that attended. And then we're going to let A represent the adult. Adult attendance. So I want you to really copy down this problem, but we have to figure out what our equation one and our equation two are going to be. That is more a concept of, from unit four, but I want you to practice it. So first of all, the easy equation, I know that I don't, I'm trying to figure out how many students attended plus how many adults attended but what do I know? How many tickets were sold in total? 108. So in total, that means 108 people must have attended. So that's going to be our equation number two. Now the dollar amount, the proceeds, that amounts to $351. Oops, let's write that better. Now, each student, so if uh, students are S, how much did each student have to pay? $2. So it'll be 2S if we're uh, translating our student tickets to dollar amount. And how, many, uh, um, how much money did each adult have to pay to get in? Positive five, $5 each. So that's how we get our two equations. The first equation, is or our first equation is for our dollar amount and our second equation is for attendance. <coughs> okay, because I'm using the substitution method, which equation am I going to be able to isolate a variable for? Which one is easier to work with for the substitution method? Which equation, Philip? The attendance equation. Very good. So I'm going to take my equation number two, and I'm going to modify it to isolate my S. So S is going to be equal to 108 minus A. Just like I did last time, I'm isolating one of my variables. And now that I've isolated my S, what am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with my S? Any clue? What should I do with it, Gabrielle? Very good, very good. So we're going to substitute. So substitute S is equal to 108 minus A into my other equation, which was equation number one. Equation number one was 200 and, uh, sorry, hmm. equation number one, 2S plus 5A 
is equal to 351. So instead of the S, I'm going to substitute my expression 108 minus A plus 5A is equal to 351. What is the next step that I have to do to solve this equation? What's the next algebraic step that I need to do that you learned about in grade 9 over and over and over again? Yep. Very good. The distributive property. I have to take the 2 and distribute it to both terms. And when you do that, you're going to have 216 minus 2a plus 5a is equal to 351. I want to isolate my a. So what is negative 2a plus 5a going to give me? Negative 2a plus 5a. Positive 3a is equal to 351 minus 216. That gives you a total answer of 135. Divide both sides by 3, and A is equal to 45. So I know that 45 adults attended. How am I, how am I going to figure out how many students attended the concert? How am I going to figure that out? What do you think? Very good. So we're going to substitute ah, into equation 2 now. And choose equation 2 because equation 2 is nice and easy. S plus A is equal to 108. If I know that my A is 45, That means that S is going to be equal to 108 minus 45. So that means that the number of students, and it makes sense is that there were more students than adults, students that attended were 63. But because it was a word problem, and the question, how many students attended? On your test, whenever there's a word problem, you have to write a written statement. There were 63 students who attended the spring concert. That makes sense to everyone? Intersection point, substitution. So substitution is really straightforward. However, if we go back to um, that slide with the graph, and we look at the equations, except for this one, system one and system two, do we have any variables that are by themselves? No, there's always a number in front of every single variable. That makes it very hard to do sub a substitution with system one and system two. So we need another method, and that is going to be called elimination. So, so steps for solving linear equations using elimination. This method is elimination. And the key to elimination, that you always have to put the equations on top of the other, and you're trying to figure out how to multiply, like what multiples they have in common. And according to that, we're going to either subtract the two equations or we're going to add the two equations. That is the key to elimination. Usually in grade 11 and 12, you're going to be using elimination a lot more than substitution. So important method to have. I want to see everyone writing this down, please, writing down your steps. And we're going to solve the elimination method. Now we're going to start off easy because um, for our y variables, it's super simple to eliminate these ones. 
So with elimination, you always have to either target the X or the Y. There is no rule that you have to eliminate the X or you have to eliminate the Y. It's up to you to pick based on what makes logical sense. So if we look at the two equations on the board, 3X plus Y is equal to 19, 4X minus Y is equal to 2, you notice that we have this positive Y and negative Y. Now the coefficients in front of them, so the numbers in front of the Y, they're the same because I have a 1Y, a positive 1Y, and a positive negative Y. The whole point is I'm trying to get zero. I want to eliminate the Y. So my question to you is, do I add the equations? I have a positive Y and a negative Y. I'm trying to get zero. So do I add these equations or do I subtract these equations? What gives me the answer of zero? Someone tell me. Do I add or do I subtract? What's the right answer? What gives me zero? You know integers. Someone shout it out. Add. Good. Positive y plus negative y is equal to zero. So I have to add these equations. If I try to subtract, I would get positive y minus negative y gives me 2y. That would not eliminate the y variable. So to eliminate, we're always trying to get 0. So that means I have to add the equations. When you add the equations, you also add everything else. And we're going to go back to elementary school and add vertically like we used to. So 3x plus 4x, that 3x plus 4x is my left-hand side. And my right-hand side is 19. 19 plus 2, which is 21. If I isolate my x by dividing both sides by 7, I get a final answer of x is equal to 3. So that x is equal to 3 is going to be the x-coordinate of my intersection point. So that was a lot very easy compared to all the algebraic steps in the substitution method. I personally like the um, elimination method a lot better. Now the key part of finding y, I can substitute x is equal to 3 into either equation 1 or equation 2. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter uh, what equation you pick. So I'm going to plug x is equal to 3 into equation 1. So when you do that, equation 1 is 3x plus y is equal to 19. So instead of, and I'm going to plug in 3 times 3 plus y is equal to 19. That means that 9 plus y is equal to 19. If I'm trying to isolate my y, what do I have to move over to the other side? What do I have to move? Yep. I have to move the 9. So that means y is equal to 19 minus 9 y is equal to 10. So what is the solution to this system of equations? What is my final answer? Joshua, tell me my final answer. y is equal to 10 is the y coordinate. What is the x coordinate of my intersection point? x is equal to positive 3. Right? So that's my intersection point. x is equal to 3 y is equal to 10. So that's an easy question with elimination because uh, there, were only, there was the same variable in front of both my y terms. What do we do with a question that looks like this? 4x minus 2y is equal to 6. x plus y is equal to 6. Now the fact that both of these equations are equal to 6, you can still solve it, but 
I want to have the same number in front of either my X's or my Y's. Uh, I'm going to choose to eliminate my X variables. Last time I, I chose to eliminate my Y variables. This time I'm going to choose to eliminate my X variables. That means what number is in front of the X in equation number one? A four. I also want a 4x in equation number 2. I want both of them to have a 4x. So, am I going to, um, how do I make that happen? Can someone tell me, how do I make that happen? Yep. Very good. I'm going to multiply the entire second equation by 4. So, I get 4x plus 4y is equal to 6 times 4, which is 24. So it's the exact same equation, it's just been multiplied by 4. My original equation was 4x minus 2y is equal to 6. And now I want to eliminate. In order, if I have a positive 4x and a positive 4x, how am I going to get a 0? Am I going to subtract the equations or add the equations? Subtract. Very good. So when we subtract these equations, and you'll see why I like elimination, it goes by faster. When I subtract the equations, I get negative 2y minus, now this is where you have to be careful, negative 2y minus positive 4y. Negative 2y minus positive 4y is equal to 6 minus 24. That is where you're going to get messed up on the test if you don't write your steps out and take very careful to the combining of integers. So 2y minus 4y is going to give me negative, um, sorry, yes, it's going to give me negative 6y is equal to negative 18. If I divide both sides by negative 6, what does y uh, turn into? Divide both sides by negative 6, y is equal to positive 3. y is equal to positive 3. Now we can uh, solve for x now by substituting y is equal to positive 3. We don't have to choose our new equation. We can pick the original equations, whatever equation was the easiest. And the easiest equation was equation 2. So I have x plus y is equal to 6. Instead of my y, I'm going to substitute positive 3. So that gives me x plus 3 is equal to 6. So what is my final answer for x going to be? What's my final answer for x? x is going to be equal to 6 minus 3. So x also, just like y, x is going to be positive 3 and I have my intersection point of positive 3 and positive 3. So does that make sense to everyone? Yes. Substitution, elimination. Those methods, you just have to be careful when you're multiplying for elimination. <coughs> now, I want you to bear with me for a second. We're going to revisit these three system of equations. And remember, you can either have no solution, one solution, or infinitely many solutions. So, if I look at my system of equations for 1, I have 2x plus 3y is equal to negative 4, and I have negative 4x minus 3y is equal to negative 1. That's the question we had over here. What happens when I perform elimination and I try to add these equations? 2x plus 3y, yes. 
What happens when I try to add these equations, guys? Yes, you eliminate the y, but you still get an answer for x. I get negative 2x is equal to, what's negative 4 plus negative 1? Negative 4 plus negative 1? Negative 5. So x is equal to positive 5 over 2. You still, you are going to get a solution, and what a solution looks like, if I try to graph that on my graphing calculator, you're going to get two graphs that look like this that are going to have an intersection point. So that means one solution. What's happening?